that brings us down from 30,000 feet, mm -hmm. down through 10,000 feet. We sort of had, a, had an idea of the sorts of things that we can have on tiles, right? Um, so what can we source for, for, for data on tiles? Um, so I'm going to take us through now um, presentation and data sources, you know, make, making those tiles work for you and your organization and, 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 and the people in their different departments that would benefit from, you know, having, you know, stuff visible on the desktop, on the tablet, or even, you know, in their pocket, right, on the phone. So if we can switch back to my screen, please, um, I'm going to show uh, the audience just a few examples of tiles that we've already seen, but what we're going to do is look behind the scenes to see where that data comes from and see how straight, relatively straightforward it is to, to surface that data um, into the tiles, right? So um, the first, ex well, actually the first example is a static tile, right, up here, but there's nothing to see. There's no, there's no data at all being surfaced there. It's just absolutely static um, and uh, hard-coded values, effectively. Uh, hard-coded modulo internationalization, of course, but hard-coded values. So we're going to move straight on to the first of three examples of dynamic tiles. So we're going to talk about these two first. Um, just for the hell of it, I've decided to use for these two particular tiles an external data source. Now, some of you out there may be familiar already with the, with the Northwind uh, OData service. So it's a public OData service that's actually uh, um, served from the uh, OData uh, the people who look after the OData standard, and it's a sample data set. So what does that, let's have a look at what the sample Northwind uh, data set looks like, first of all. I've just happened to have um, uh, a tab open here with a view of the product's so-called entity set. So for those not familiar with OData, entity set is a, is, a, is, a, is a concept which basically means a list of things. Okay, so we've got here a list of products. So I'm going to scroll all the way down, and it's going to go past your screen very, very fast. Uh, we want the count of that product. Uh, we want the count of that product in our tile. We want 77. So what do we need to do? Actually, we need to just leverage, using as a verb, just because I can, and I'm on television, uh, we need to leverage the dollar count feature of OData to say, don't show me the entities, just tell me how many there are. And I'm going to make that a little bit bigger so you can see it's 77 there. So that particular resource is a scalar resource, and the value is 77. And that 77 is surfaced in that tile there. Now, how does it actually work? So first of all, I've got um, a few slides. Um, John used up almost our entire quota of slides allowed for one webinar. So I've only got four slides. Um, but hopefully that, that, the, the four slides will, uh, will allow us to, 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 to go through this. So let me just bring up this diagram. So there's our tile on the right-hand side with 77. And that tile is defined in our Fury Launchpad. I'm using uh, a Fury Launchpad on the HANA Cloud platform, particularly via the HANA Cloud portal, which is an awesome service. And you know, I'm using our Bluefin Solutions one, but you can also get a trial account, which is free. Um, so there's no reason for you not to do this as well. And you define, I've defined this tile as a dynamic tile. And when you define a dynamic tile, it gives you the possibility to specify a resource, a URL, for um, the service, as in where am I going to drag this information from on a regular basis or just on a single count. And the regular basis interval here is specified at this refresh interval thing. So as you can see, we've got what we recognize, part recognized from the URL. We've got Northwind v3, northwind.service, products, dollar count, which is what we just saw. Okay. Um, maybe we'll do a follow-up as to a little bit more detail on how this URL is constructed, but very briefly, down at the bottom there, you can see the URL printed out. Printed out? <laughs> bit old-fashioned. You can see the URL displayed there, and we've got SAP Fury, which is the, the Launchpad Fury, or the HCP Fury proxy, pointing to destinations in orange, which is actually an app that's, uh, that I defined in the Web IDE and pushed and deployed to the HANA Cloud platform. That app, we'll have a brief look at that app shortly, that app doesn't have, have any stuff in it. All it has is a neoapp.json file, which is a mapping between a destination definition, a relative URL, and a destination in the HANA Cloud platform. 
So the destination definition is in purple there, slash D slash north winds at the bottom. And that slash D slash north winds via the destination mapping in the app neoapp.json uh, file is mapped to a destination. This is very complicated, but it actually, when you see it, it's actually quite simple. Uh, mapped to a destination called Northwinds in our HANA Cloud platform. So there's the destination Northwinds that points, it's a type HTTP, and it points at uh, a base URL. And that, of course, then points to the Northwind service. So there's that diagram. Hold that diagram uh, in mind for a second, and let's just trace that through. And we'll do the same thing again for this next one and the next one after that. So we've got here a definition of our dynamic tile number one. And if we have a look, at the navigation definition. We can see that's our service URL here. I've deliberately not put in a refresh interval to show that you, you can have nothing, so it doesn't refresh uh, any, any frequency whatsoever. OK, and that points to our product dollar count, but it points to that through a mapping in the neoapp.json. So we've got the neoapp.json here in our destinations app. If I double click that, we can see slash D slash Northwinds maps to a target, which is a destination type in HCP with the name Northwinds. And our destinations, of course, as you can see here, are defined here. Here's another destination that I'm going to show you shortly, but this is where we, we define our destinations. So all this is connected together with the result that without any sort of cause headaches or uh, you know, multi-destinations cross-origin policies, you can pull in information from on-premise SAP and non-SAP data sources, but also from external, non, uh, not on-premise, non-premise, non-premise. I've just coined a new phrase, non-premise. OK, so that's all well and good. So let's go back to our um, example. But what if you wanted a, something slightly more tricky? You can still use the power of OData to say, well, just show me the out-of-stock products. So you can imagine already uh, you know, a series of KPIs all related to the same source, to the same list of products, for example, but you might want to say, well, just show me the ones that are out of stock. So how do you do that? Actually, that's no magic. That's just using the power of OData again to say, well, actually, all I'm going to do is add a filter, an OData query option to say, show me all those ones where the units in stock um, uh, property, the value is less than or equal to zero, and it's five. Amazing. So in fact, I, if I take off the dollar count there, you can see that it's just, woo, that's very big, woo, uh, it's just five, okay? So that's where we're getting the five from. So with just the power of, you know, a single OData service, and if you've got any Fury apps installed right now, or even some uh, other OData services in, in your gateway installation, then you've already got, you know, possibly a wealth of information that you can actually pull out and expose just like that in a, in a dynamic tile, okay? So there's the two first examples of exposing information in a dynamic tile, okay? But what happens if you want to say, oh, danger, Will Robinson, we've only got f we've got five out of stock products, you want to make that number red, right? What are you laughing at? It's I'd like to have danger, well, not danger, Will Robinson, but anyway, I'd like to have that number in red. But you can't do that using this standard mechanism of using a single scalar value from a no data dollar count, for example. What you have to do is to embrace the slightly more powerful version of the dynamic tile which is to say, instead of surfacing a single scalar product, a single scalar value, I'm going to surface a whole entity. So in OData terms, that's a single thing, a single entity with a number of different properties. And that entity is a well-defined entity with a number of properties that are well known. And I'm going to look along my uh, tabs here. Where are they? Uh, where are they? There, there, we, there we go. So I've got a sample OData service in our backend on-premise SAP system. Um, and that OData service is called ZBFF sample underscore serve. And as you can see here, we've got a tiles entity set. And I'm specifically going for one particular entity. That's why I've got an entry rather than a feed here, OData wise. And that surfaces, let me just make that a little bit bigger, that surfaces a number of these well known um, properties title, subtitle, number, number unit, and so on. And with the values for these well-known properties, we can influence the complete tile. So if I go to my uh, slides, slide number two of four will show us how that works. It's almost the same as the first slide, but instead, we're actually going to an on-premise, and this is, of course, an internal URL, so don't even try and go there because it doesn't exist, an internal URL via the HANA Cloud connector, which does a reverse mapping to our um, on-premise ABAP stack system where our OData service 
uh, is uh, exposed. And we can pull that in. And we can see, for example, that when we take that, um, when, we, when we embrace that um, uh, entity type and use all the values for the properties in that entity type, we can see that we get the title, production deploys there, we get the subtitle, this month to date. We even get the chance to have a number state. Don't forget we're talking semantic colors here rather than explicit colors. We've got the number state, which is positive, which means green or red, which is uh, error or negative, uh, with Danger Will Robinson, all that sort of stuff. And we can even influence the state arrow up, for example, this is more than last month's. Notice I'm doing agile. Agile KPIs here, we've deployed 21 times to production because we are super agile, et cetera, right? So you can influence all the sort of stuff in a dynamic tile. So again, just with quite simple use of OData and this, this, this um, entity type definition, you can do really cool things, but you're restricted to numbers.